Got married three years ago after dating for three years. We have a kid, two-year-old female, together. We are generally very happy together. We sort of vaguely knew about each other's intimacy history, but not too much. She told me she had been with one guy in college, then her ex-boyfriend, and then me. And that was it. I told her I was more experienced, and she didn't mind that. We never touched on it much. In a TV show we were watching, they were talking about body counts. She just sort of randomly asked me how many I had slept with. I told her the truth, probably around 60, 70 or so. For some context, I was a bit of a excuse my French hunky guy back in college. And then after I worked as a bartender at a nightclub where there were countless opportunities for very easy, casual intimacy. There were times where I just kind of went full on crazy and slept with a lot of people in a month for the sake of it. She knew that I worked there and she saw pictures of me in college. So I figured she knew it was going to be a high number. But apparently to her, a high number was like 10, 15. When I told her 60, 70, she right away thought I was joking. And then when I told her I wasn't, she got visibly upset. She basically said that 60, 70 was an insane number and that I should have told her sooner and that that went way past just being normally promiscuous for a bit while working at a bar. I told her that wasn't that crazy. There were people who worked there who had body counts easily in the hundreds and she basically called me a liar. She then asked how many of them were men and I said four of them were and she made this big deal about how I told her I experimented with men and that having intimacy with four men does not count as experimenting. That is way past that. I suppose she isn't wrong about that, but that was something I offhand mentioned on like our third date, but it was such a minor thing that I didn't think about it much at the time. She basically said, so you are bisexual and you just never decided to tell me? And I told her I didn't necessarily view myself that way because my attraction to women far outweighs my attraction to men. And so I didn't consider myself that. Once again, she kind of implied I was lying. She then said something which really bugged me. She said that if she knew I had slept with that many people, she would not have started dating me. She did admit that she is glad she did and that it doesn't ruin things, but that that would have been a deal breaker for her early on. And I needed to understand that so that I can comprehend why this is a big deal for her. I asked her why she thought it would be a deal breaker. And she said that she shouldn't have to explain why. But then after a bit, she just said that people who sleep with that many people usually have problems. It's a red flag to her. And she said again that she is glad I didn't have those problems. And she is glad I married her. But she still views it as a red flag. And it's worse that I kept it a secret from her. I just don't really know what to say. Sleeping with a bunch of people a decade before I even met her is just not a big deal to me. And maybe we hung out with very different crowds. I am from New York City. She is from a small town in Arkansas, but 60. 70 is high, but not like astronomically high. Especially if it's all concentrated in maybe four years of being young and dumb. I didn't really want to argue with her that night. It was mostly her ranting at me. But the way she said things, the way she accused me of lying, the way she made me out to be some kind of manipulator by not telling her my body count, it has really been rubbing me the wrong way. How do I confront her about this? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, my comment was removed. Dang it. I'll try to recreate without the offending word. It seems like a weird time in your relationship to start shaming you for your intimacy activity prior to your relationship. Regardless, when people get upset about high body counts as she did, it's usually because it brings up feelings of inadequacy a kind of retroactive jealousy, if you will. It can be hard to articulate those feelings because the person knows the other intimacy partners are in the past and technically not a threat. But now that she knows she is comparing herself to 70 people, how can one person compare to 70 people? Her attack on you about lying is really her being defensive about her insecurities. I know it hurt to hear that, but confronting her on that won't be productive because that accusation is just defensiveness and not the real issue for her. The better move for you is to affirm your wife as everything you want in a wife, that she satisfies you in every way, that you do not pine away for anyone in your past, that you do not pine away for casual intimacy, that she is your one and only, not number 71. Once she is secure, 
you may be able to have more heart-to-heart -heart talks, but she's probably a little too defensive right now, comparing herself to all those people in your intimacy history. Comment two. Usually people aren't upset about a high body count. They are upset about what that number means in terms of their view on intimacy. To some, intimacy is a fun activity that makes you feel good. To others, it is an extremely intimate thing that makes you vulnerable and creates strong bonds with the other person. Something you don't do with any random stranger, but only with someone you have built trust with and whom you see a future with. If you are of the latter category and then discover that your partner has a high body count, no matter when this discovery happens, you start to feel a disconnect. You start to wonder if your partner sees intimacy as something less than you do, as something less connecting, less bonding, less intimate. Just as a fun thing to do and for you, it means so much more and requires so much more in terms of vulnerability and trust. Suddenly you feel alone and like you are not equal anymore, that you might give a lot more of yourself than your partner does. This disconnect is usually the issue. It's about not feeling equal anymore in terms of what intimacy means. And that's what you need to talk to your wife about. She needs to better articulate how she is feeling right now and what that new information does to her. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for checking in. So after that whole conversation about my past, things have been pretty tense around the house. My wife has been distant and it's clear she's still processing everything. I tried to give her some space, but it was hard not to feel the strain. Our daughter, thankfully, is too young to understand any of this. But I can tell she's picking up on the tension between us. A few days after our initial argument, my wife came to me with a serious look on her face. She said she needed to talk. We sat down and she told me that she had been thinking a lot about our conversation and that she had something to confess. She admitted that she hadn't been entirely truthful about her own past. She revealed that she had actually been with more people than she initially told me, specifically mentioning a few more guys from her college days and a brief fling she had right before we started dating. She said she didn't think it was relevant at the time and didn't want to seem like she was hiding anything. But now she felt guilty for not being completely honest. This revelation hit me hard. I felt a mix of emotions, relief that she was being honest but also frustration that she had kept this from me. It made me question why she had been so harsh about my past when she hadn't been entirely truthful herself. I asked her why she hadn't told me sooner, and she said she was afraid of how I would react, especially since she knew I had a more extensive history. She thought it would make her seem hypocritical. We talked for a long time that night, trying to understand each other's perspectives. She admitted that she'd been projecting her own insecurities onto me, and that she was struggling with the idea of my past because it made her feel inadequate. She said she felt like she couldn't measure up to all the people I had been with, and that it made her question her own worth. I tried to reassure her that my past had nothing to do with my feelings for her, and that she was the only one who mattered to me now. But then she dropped another bombshell. She told me that one of the guys she'd been with in college was someone she had been in love with, and that she had never really gotten over him. She said she had buried those feelings deep down and thought they were gone, but our recent conversation had brought them back to the surface. She said she needed time to sort through her emotions and figure out what she really wanted. This was a lot to take in. I felt like my whole world was crashing down around me. I didn't know what to say or how to react. I felt betrayed, confused, and hurt. I asked her if she still loved me, and she said she did. But she needed to be honest with herself about her feelings for this other guy. She said she didn't want to make any rash decisions and that she needed time to think. The next few days were a blur. We tried to keep things as normal as possible for our daughter, but it was clear that things were far from normal. My wife was distant and I could see the pain in her eyes. I felt like I was walking on eggshells, afraid to say or do anything that might make things worse. Then one evening I came home from work to find my wife sitting at the kitchen table with a letter in her hand. She said it was from the guy she had been in love with in college. Apparently he had reached out to her on social media a few weeks ago and they had been exchanging messages. She said she hadn't told me because she didn't want to upset me, but now she felt like she needed to be completely honest. I felt a surge of anger and betrayal. I couldn't believe she had been talking to this guy behind my back. I asked her what the letter said and she handed it to me. It was a long heartfelt letter where he confessed that he still had feelings for her 
and that he regretted not pursuing a relationship with her back then. He said he wanted to see her and talk about their feelings in person. I felt like I had been punched in the gut. I didn't know what to do or say. My wife looked at me with tears in her eyes and said she didn't know what to do either. She said she loved me and didn't want to hurt me, but she needed to be honest about her feelings. I felt like I was at a crossroads. I didn't want to lose my wife, but I also didn't want to be with someone who had feelings for someone else. I told her I needed some time to think and that we should take a break to figure things out. She agreed and we decided to spend a week apart to sort through our emotions. During that week, I did a lot of soul searching. I thought about our relationship, our daughter, and what I really wanted. I realized that I still loved my wife and that I wanted to fight for our marriage. I decided to confront her about the letter and ask her to cut off all contact with this guy. I knew it would be a hard conversation, but I felt like it was the only way to move forward. When we finally sat down to talk, I told her how I felt and asked her to choose between me and this other guy. She looked at me with tears in her eyes and said she wanted to be with me. She said she would cut off all contact with him and focus on our marriage. I felt a sense of relief, but also a lingering doubt. I knew it would take time to rebuild the trust between us, but I was willing to try. As we started to work through our issues, I learned more about my wife's past and the reasons behind her insecurities. She told me about her childhood and how she had always felt like she wasn't good enough. She said she had always struggled with self-esteem and that my past had triggered those feelings. I realized that her reaction wasn't just about my body count, but about her own fears and insecurities. We decided to go to couples therapy to work through our issues and rebuild our trust. It hasn't been easy, but we're making progress. We're learning to communicate better and understand each other's perspectives. I know it will take time, but I'm hopeful that we can get through this and come out stronger on the other side. Thanks for reading. Thank Ada for dumping my boyfriend. After he accused me of treating him like a predator. A 27-year-old female have been dating Luke, 34-year-old male, for the past nine months. He asked me out at a mutual friend's wedding, and I said yes, as I thought he was very attractive. I was happy to find out he is also intelligent, charming, kind, and very fun. We see each other two to three times a week, go on regular dates, have been on holiday together, and have met each other's families slash friends. We had a brief disagreement about him wanting us to move in together sooner than I was ready, but otherwise, it's been fantastic. Anyway, hopefully that is a useful background to show our relationships going really well otherwise. Now onto the issue, uh, last week I was over at his place. It was a Saturday evening and we'd been out all day. We had a quick dinner and we're relaxing on the sofa. He started kissing me in a way that was clear he was initiating intimacy, and as I was not in the mood, I told him I wasn't feeling it and could we just cuddle. He did briefly try to convince me, but once I made it clear I was serious, he dropped the topic. It was a little awkward after this, so I asked if everything was okay. He said he just wanted to have intimacy. We went to sleep pretty soon afterward, but he was acting normal in the morning. We didn't see each other for a few days, but had been texting like normal. He told me he wanted to have a talk about our relationship when he came over the next day. I had a feeling it was going to be about the intimacy incident and was a little anxious. He told me that he was caught really off guard when I rejected his advances on Saturday night and had been thinking over it a lot. He explained that intimacy was incredibly important to him and he had a really high intimacy drive. He was married before and apparently this was an issue that led to their divorce. Even though I'd picked up on this, I was still pretty surprised. It was once the first time in our relationship that I hadn't been in the mood. We have intimacy at least once every time we see each other, sometimes more, since we started about three months into dating. Part of what has thrown me off is how respectful he was at the start when I wanted to wait longer than him before we started being sexually intimate. I didn't really respond to him because I did not know how to. I was still gathering my thoughts on the situation, but I did ask what he expected from me. He said he was happy with our usual frequency of intimacy, though would be open to more but mainly wanted to communicate his needs as soon as he started to see an issue forming, so it doesn't become a deal breaker. A few hours later, when we were having intimacy, it was in the back of my mind and made me feel pretty gross afterward, like the option to say no had been taken away. After thinking it over for a few days, I asked Luke if we could talk about it again, after I worked out what I wanted to say. I told him that his comments about intimacy had been on my mind, 
and that while I understand his need for intimacy and appreciated him communicating with me, I also needed him to understand that sometimes I will have a good reason to not want to have intimacy. He said that was fine and agreed in principle. There would be times I wouldn't be able to have intimacy with him. I brought up, for example, when we have children, I won't be able to have intimacy for a couple of months after giving birth. He said, of course, and was initially reassuring, but then joked about how I could keep him happy for a while with blowjobs, though he might not have actually been joking, as he always expects them when I am on my period. I tried to keep talking about it, but we reached a bit of an impasse, so continued with the day. Within an hour, he was initiating again, and this time I said no, because I didn't want to feel like last time. He asked what was wrong, and I tried to explain how I felt before, but he reacted pretty badly. He was mad and said I was treating him like a predator for wanting to have intimacy. We ended up arguing for a bit. He ended it by saying he couldn't end up with another woman who would withhold intimacy from him and left my apartment. It's been a quiet few days between us, and I'm seriously considering the future of our relationship. Our conversations haven't been that productive, but I'm really torn. I wouldn't even say we are sexually incompatible. I've been really happy with our frequency too, but I just think it's fair that I get to say no on the odd occasion I'm not in the mood. I don't understand how this has become a relationship ending issue so quickly. I guess he might be projecting his issues with his ex on me, but that feels really unfair. Is my perspective fair on this issue? Or am I overreacting given I don't actually disagree with having regular intimacy? I've actually been considering breaking up with him, but not sure if that's a bit dramatic. Any advice would be much appreciated. Now for an update. Firstly, thanks so much for every person that replied. Your advice and comments have been so reassuring and validating to me. I definitely could have convinced myself that his view was acceptable, so I'm really glad I did post. He just called me to ask when we were next going to see each other, almost as though it hadn't happened. I explained that I wasn't sure after how things had ended last time. He ended up backtracking and apologizing for what happened. He said he was trying to avoid going down the same path as his previous relationship, and he loves me so much he can't stand to be in a relationship where he can't express that physically. It's really hard because I think I really love him, and I'm not sure I've ever had that with anyone else. I wish so much I could go back to before this happened, but something is telling me I can't ignore this horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach. We ended the conversation agreeing to meet up tonight, and I think I'm going to end it. I don't think it's going to go very well, and I'm not looking forward to it, but I take all your comments so seriously. There is something inside of me just screaming to get the hell out of this. Second update. Had a couple of messages and comments asking for an update. Not sure if anyone will see this, but really overwhelmed by the response so far. So feel you all deserve an update. To keep it short, I broke up with him and I'm so relieved. The conversation went pretty badly and he was absolutely unwilling to acknowledge my perspective at all. He got kind of mean, but was also practically begging me to stay with him, which was quite confusing. I'm sure I made the right decision. If nothing else, there is no way in hell I'd ever be able to enjoy intimacy with him again, knowing how he views it. He's tried to get in touch with me since. I'll probably block him. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Well, that explains why he had a divorce and believes his demands should be met no matter what. Also, him talking about ways to make him happy in certain situations, like after having kids or during your period, seems gross, like he can't stop thinking about intimacy for once. This kind of behavior might lead to cheating on you if you don't give him what he wants every time. Up to you, but this feels like none of you are compatible. Comment 2. He has a really warped view of intimacy. You turned him down one time, and he's throwing a tantrum and guilt-tripping you. He's acting like sexually pleasing him as your job, whether you like it or not, rather than intimacy being something mutual that you both want. Who the hell even wants to have intimacy with someone who doesn't want to? That's very concerning. I wouldn't be able to look past this. His mindset is gross. Now for the update. Thanks for all the support and comments from my last post. So here's what happened next. After I broke up with Luke, I felt a mix of relief and sadness. It was hard to let go of someone I thought I loved, but I knew it was the right decision. For the first few weeks, I focused on myself. I spent more time with friends and family, 
and even picked up a new hobby, painting. It was therapeutic and helped me process everything that had happened. But then, about a month after the breakup, I got a message from Luke. He apologized again and said he wanted to talk. I was hesitant but agreed to meet him for coffee. When we met, he seemed genuinely remorseful. He admitted that he had been projecting his issues from his previous marriage onto me and that he was seeing a therapist to work through his problems. He asked if we could try again, but I told him I needed more time to think about it. A few days later, I ran into one of Luke's friends at a mutual friend's party. We got to talking and he mentioned that Luke had been really struggling since the breakup. He also let slip that Luke's ex-wife had reached out to him recently. This piqued my curiosity, so I did some digging. I found out that Luke's ex-wife had been trying to reconnect with him, and it made me wonder if that was part of the reason he was so desperate to get back together with me. I decided to confront Luke about it. When I asked him, he admitted that his ex-wife had reached out, but insisted that it had nothing to do with his desire to get back together. He said he was committed to moving forward and wanted to build a future with me. I wasn't sure what to believe, but I told him I needed more time to think. Meanwhile, I started noticing some changes in myself. I was more cautious and guarded in my interactions with people, especially men. I realized that the whole situation with Luke had left me with some trust issues. I decided to see a therapist to work through my feelings and make sure I was making decisions that were best for me. During one of my therapy sessions, I had a breakthrough. I realized that part of the reason I was so drawn to Luke was because he reminded me of my father. My dad had always been very demanding and controlling, and I had spent my whole life trying to please him. I saw the same traits in Luke, and it made me realize that I needed to break that pattern. Around this time, Luke started sending me gifts and flowers, trying to win me back. It was flattering, but it also felt a bit manipulative. I decided to take a step back and focus on myself. I told Luke that I needed more time and space to figure things out. A few weeks later, I got a call from Luke's ex-wife. She wanted to meet and talk about Luke. I was hesitant, but agreed. When we met, she told me about their marriage and how Luke's need for control and constant validation had driven them apart. She said she had reached out to him because she wanted closure and to make sure he was getting the help he needed. Her words hit me hard. I realized that I had been ignoring some red flags because I wanted so badly for the relationship to work. I thanked her for her honesty and decided it was time to move on for good. I called Luke and told him that I couldn't be with him. I explained that I needed to focus on myself and that I couldn't be in a relationship where I felt pressured and controlled. He was upset but seemed to understand. We agreed to go our separate ways. In the months that followed, I continued to work on myself. I focused on my career, my hobbies, and my relationships with friends and family. I even started dating again, but this time I was more cautious and took things slow. Looking back, I realized that breaking up with Luke was the best decision I could have made. It allowed me to see the patterns in my behavior and work on breaking them. It also helped me understand what I truly want and need in a relationship. Thanks again for all the support and advice. It really helped me through a tough time. Ada for crying after my husband slept through the water heater appointment and blamed me for it. Today, we had a technician over to replace our water heater. I sent my husband a text last week telling him when I scheduled it. I also talked about it at dinner on Saturday. I also asked him Sunday, yesterday, if he would be able to deal with them if they showed up in the arrival window. During the period I needed to pop into the office and he said yes. This morning, I woke up 30 minutes before the arrival window so I could get myself ready and do my morning routine, etc. When the technician arrived about 30 minutes into the stated window, my husband was still sleeping. I greeted the technician and showed him in. He had to turn off the breaker to the water heater and also turn off the main water line to the house and then drain what was left in the pipes. So I texted my husband telling him FYI water is shut off, intending for him to see it whenever he wakes up. When my husband came downstairs, we were talking about the water, confirming that it's off. I decided to not go to the office anymore. Then I went upstairs to start working. My husband called me on the phone because he was walking out to my car to grab his water bottle he left in there, and he asked me to unlock the door. I told him that I had already brought it in. 
He said, oh, okay. Then said to me that it would have been nice if I filled up some water cups before they shut off the water. And then he sarcastically said, yeah, what a great idea. I told him he could have woken up and dealt with whatever he needed to and asked him why he's upset with me that he doesn't have any water and why that's my fault. He said that I would have done that if I cared about him. I hung up the phone. He came upstairs and said, I'm making a big deal out of nothing. I said it's ridiculous for him to be mad at me for him not having water. He wouldn't stop arguing, so I shut my door so I could work. He texted me. I wasn't blaming you or trying to argue with you. I don't know why you decided that, but that's your deal. I'm sorry if my words upset you. I texted him the exact scene that just happened of what he said about how I could have filled up some water glasses and I told him he could have woken up himself when he knew they would be here and that I'm not his mother. Then a delivery came with a piece of furniture I was waiting for. So I started unpacking the box in the kitchen and he came back upset with me that I was upset. I told him he's using not having water against me and that it's ridiculous. He kept arguing with me and it turned into a back and forth. I told him he knew when they were gonna be here and he could have gotten up. He said I could have told him they were here. I said it's not my responsibility to wake him up and that he's angry with me that I didn't wake him up or get him water before they turned it off. He said he doesn't understand what I want him to say and I told him he should say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I went upstairs to build my chair and he came up to continue arguing with me. I told him that I already told him what made me upset, so what is he arguing about? It was going in circles and he kept trying to argue everything instead of addressing the exact thing I told him that made me upset. I started crying because of how frustrating this argument was and I was trying to finish building my chair so I could go back to work. He wouldn't leave me alone. I asked multiple times for him to leave me alone and he wouldn't. I told him to leave the room and leave me alone. He wouldn't do it and kept trying to argue. I verbally said to myself, this is ridiculous and he's a jerk. He still wouldn't leave me alone and he told me I'm an embarrassment. I mean, what the heck? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, he just wanted to argue. The water being shut off was just the reason to start, and as you pointed out, he didn't want to stop. He has long-term anger and resentment about something, and I'm betting it's not about water. Oh, and he could have taken some responsibility and prepare for the water outage in advance. Be awake when the tech showed up even to remember the water was going to be shut off. Instead, everything is your fault, and none of it his. Classic narcissist behavior. Comment 2. Why wasn't your husband already awake to deal with the tech as discussed on Sunday, since you had to work? Granted, it's been a minute since I replaced a water heater, but I remember having to turn the water off for only an hour or two. Was that too long to wait? I really think y'all need marital counseling to learn how to argue, disagree, and communicate effectively. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. So after that whole argument about the water, things got even more complicated. The next day, my husband and I barely spoke. I was still upset and he seemed to be avoiding me. I decided to focus on work and let things cool down. But then something unexpected happened. My boss called me into the office for an urgent meeting. I had to leave immediately which meant I had to leave my husband to deal with the technician finishing up the water heater installation. When I got back home later that evening, the technician was gone and the water heater was installed. My husband was in the living room looking frustrated. He told me that there was a problem with the installation and that the water heater wasn't working properly. I asked him if he had called the company to report the issue and he said he hadn't. He was waiting for me to come home and deal with it. I was furious. I couldn't believe he hadn't taken any action while I was gone. I called the company and explained the situation. They said they could send someone out the next day to fix the issue. I thanked them and hung up, feeling a mix of relief and frustration. My husband and I had another argument that night. He accused me of always taking control and not letting him handle things. I told him that if he wanted to handle things, he needed to actually do something instead of waiting for me to fix everything. The next day, the technician came back and fixed the water heater. This time, my husband stayed downstairs and supervised the entire process. I could tell he was trying to make an effort, but I was still upset about everything that had happened. We didn't talk much that day, and I could feel the tension between us growing. 
A few days later, I received an email from my boss about a potential promotion. It was an exciting opportunity, but it would require me to travel more frequently and work longer hours. I was torn. On one hand, I wanted to advance in my career, but on the other hand, I knew it would put even more strain on my already fragile relationship with my husband. I decided to talk to my husband about it. I wanted to see if we could find a way to make it work. When I brought it up, he seemed supportive at first, but then he started to express his concerns. He was worried that we wouldn't have enough time together and that our relationship would suffer even more. I understood his concerns, but I also felt like he wasn't considering my career aspirations. We had a long and emotional conversation that night. We both expressed our fears and frustrations. I told him that I felt like I was always the one making sacrifices for our relationship, and he admitted that he had been taking me for granted. It was a difficult conversation, but it felt like we were finally being honest with each other. The next day, my husband surprised me by suggesting that we go to couples therapy. He said he wanted to work on our communication and find a way to support each other better. I was hesitant at first, but I agreed. I knew we needed help, and I was willing to try anything to save our relationship. We had our first therapy session a few days later. It was intense, but it felt good to have a neutral third party help us navigate our issues. The therapist helped us identify some of the underlying problems in our relationship, like our lack of communication and our tendency to blame each other for everything. She gave us some exercises to work on at home and scheduled our next session for the following week. In the meantime, I decided to accept the promotion. I knew it would be challenging, but I also felt like it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. I talked to my boss about my concerns, and she assured me that we could find a way to make it work. She even suggested that I work from home more often to balance my work and personal life. As the week went on, my husband and I started to make small changes. We made an effort to communicate more openly and to support each other. It wasn't easy, and we still had our moments of frustration, but it felt like we were making progress. The therapy sessions were helping, and we were both committed to making our relationship work. One night, we were sitting on the couch, talking about our day, when my husband suddenly opened up about something that had been bothering him for a long time. He told me that he had always felt like he was living in my shadow, that he was never good enough. It was a vulnerable moment, and it made me realize how much pressure he'd been putting on himself. I reassured him that I loved him for who he was and that I didn't expect him to be perfect. That conversation was a turning point for us. It felt like we were finally starting to understand each other on a deeper level. We still had a long way to go, but I felt hopeful for the first time in a while. We were both willing to put in the effort to make our relationship work, and that made all the difference. Thanks for reading. Thanks for... If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.